Hello, and welcome to Draw Sessions. Today, I'm going to show you a very effective way that both aspiring concept artists and also industry veterans can construct an entire sheet of creature thumbnails very quickly. Now you'll see that the drawing that I'm starting up here in the upper left-hand corner, it's just a bunch of scribbles. This is what I want you to do, and feel free to draw along with me, either in a traditional sketchbook digitally, it doesn't matter. If you have Procreate, a tablet, let's just have fun with this. So what I'm doing now is I'm throwing together a bunch of lines that have a relatively good thick to thin ratio. And what that does is even in the most primitive form of a shape, it can still convey uh, good depth, line weight, line quality, and the thumbnail itself will look pretty good. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at these shapes that I'm forming and it's, it's forcing me out of my comfort zone because every artist has a certain set of, of, of lines and angles that they like to draw with, me included. Like for me, my brain operates in that whole insectoid realm, like that creepy, hairy, alien bug look. Some people like to do fantasy, some people like to do um, bubbly. You know, there's a lot of different genres that we kind of are drawn to, no pun intended. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find out shapes that may work. Now, whenever I start a thumbnail, I tend to move around pretty quickly and I don't spend any more than a couple minutes on it. A good method for doing this until you get good enough to where you can time yourself is just set your cell phone down next to your sketch pad and you can do some pretty good stuff there. Now, the second thing that I like doing is anytime that I get a thumbnail in here, I'm gonna darken the bottom of it so it can convey a shadow without you spending too much time shading in an actual shadow. It, I, this is what I like to reiterate to all my students is, is that spending too much time, putting in too much detail is going to hinder your progress. I'm trying to find the, the coolest and best shapes possible that may form from this thumbnail sketch. Now, when 10 people look at this drawing right here, there's going to be 10 different ideas that people have of it. For example, it kind of looks like a rock. It kind of looks like a beetle. It looks like a hairball. It may be a strange bulky spaceship. It may be a, a prop. Th this is a good thing because what happens is, like if you're working for a studio or a client and you need several good iterations on a page, you want to spark the imagination of everybody on the development team. And not just you, but everybody. Because everybody included is going to see something different. And when imagination is sparked, it opens up a whole different set of doors where you can talk about really cool animations and really cool textures you could put on it, movements that you didn't think of. And the cool thing about creatures is that I mean, if you bend the, I, I, how should I put this? There's anatomical things that you have to follow with joints and muscles and tendons and stuff, but you can kind of get away with a lot when it comes to creatures. Now I've spent probably two minutes on this, maybe a little bit more. So I'm just gonna darken up the bottom, maybe put in some shadows here and there. And I don't know where I'm gonna put shadows in. I'm just kind of following these lines that I think are good, the, the bigger lines. And then I'm going to move on to my second thumbnail. So when I do this, I, I'm kind of a neat freak when it comes to my sketchbooks. So I'll, I'll line up the ground plane evenly like this. You'll see it perfectly symmetrical and everything. It, totally up to you. Remember, if you're just doodling these in your sketchbook, your sketchbook is a diary, okay? You write whatever you want in your diary. You draw whatever you want in your sketchbook. One of the things that I, I think hindered me as I was younger and I was trying to be a really good artist is that I was too worried about who was going to see my sketches. And I failed to realize that that caused me to draw what, other, what I thought other people want to see versus what I was actually passionate about. 
And when I gave that up and I just said, you know what, I'm just gonna put whatever in my sketchbook. That's when I started to fill the sketchbooks up. It's funny how that happens. Can't tell you how many times growing up, my parents would buy me multiple sketchbooks. I would open up a page and I would maybe draw one thing on it and then I would get angry at that sketch and then I would close it or you know, go on to the next drawing and I realized, man, I haven't filled up anything. All right, so this right here, I'm gonna put some hair in here just for fun. Kind of scribble it on there. And this is a little bit different of a shape, kind of more bulbous. Um, could be anything really. I can put some like th thick thunderous legs on there and it could be a, a giant hairy ape looking thing or put an eye up there just for fun. Now see, I'm just having fun with this. I'm not doing an insect right here. It's, it's more of like a rhino with hair. Maybe like a wooly rhino thing. Um, looks like there's a, a beak on it. Maybe a big, I don't know, like a dra uh, like a gullet. We'll put a gullet right there. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So as I'm looking at this, I'm going, you know what? I see a shape happening. And it looks like this is the the gullet or the throat, that's gonna be the chest, that's gonna be the bottom of the hip going out to the tail. So I'm gonna erase that and I'm just gonna slightly put in some hatching, messy hatching, and then darken up the belly, and then maybe the tail. Now as far as the legs go, I don't know. Um, let's have fun with it. Let's just put a couple spheres in there for the joint. You know, put one here, and then we'll kind of round off a leg, maybe make it skinny at the bottom. Maybe there's two legs splitting off here. And if you look at this, I mean, this sketch is a mess. I mean, there's so many things going on, but I want you to embrace that because there's a lot of different uh, possibilities within this thumbnail. See, now I'm kind of seeing things that I didn't before. So maybe I can put in five eyes and six and seven and eight, and put in some shading. Now you notice that even within this scribble, there's a lot of different depth in here. There's a lot of line weight, the really light stuff, the really gestural lines. And then I got a little darker. So I'm just, and I'm not spending a lot of time with detail, I'm just kind of rolling out some larger shapes, maybe put in a little bit more indications of, of fur. Maybe that could be a, a big tail on the back. That's kind of fun. Let's flip the canvas to see what that looks like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't know what that is. It's like a giant bird rhino. That's fine with me. Uh, don't don't really know or care about the feet yet, because it, you know, when I teach my students, I always tell them that these will be developed for a later time. Okay, so what I mean by that is eventually you're going to take multiple thumbnails and you're going to turn the opacity down like this, and then you're going to create a new layer and then you're just gonna sketch over top of it, but with more detail. That's the pipeline. That's how you develop drawings, okay? It's underlays, overlays. Overlays would be the new sketch that you put on. When you turn the opacity down on the original sketch, that is the underlay. Um, some good paper to actually use for this if you're gonna go buy a sketch pad is uh, Letraset. You know, and I'll, I'll put that over here. Letraset and also graphics 360 it's kind of expensive I'm not gonna lie to you folks both of them are rather expensive because they're marker paper now graphics 360 is good for sketching and marker work that's why a lot of industrial designers use it that's why I used it in school uh, it's just it's just really good and it's also transparent so you can see through it it's just a really good paper to have it's it's a little pricey but it's worth it because you can sketch large if you find yourself drawing too tightly. All right, let's put in another ground plane. This time I'm gonna try a couple other different shapes. So these were rather bulbous. All right, why don't we just do something strange? I'm just gonna throw together these, I don't know, I guess peacock shapes, like they almost look like beans. And what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of fusing them together with little lines here and there. Just letting my mind kind of wander and seeing what happens. 
And all of a sudden, I, I see something form that I didn't know was there before. It almost looks like a little spaceship just hovering. That's kind of neat. It reminds me of uh, the movie Nope. You guys have ever seen that with the UFO and everything? It's, it's pretty cool. All right, so now that we got that, I'm uh, just going to scribble. And I mean scribble. I'm going to put in some scribbles here and there, maybe some strange little lines that could act as hair, could act as little spikes, I don't know. Just trying to imagine what I could bring to the table later if I were to ever take these and, and uh, develop them further. Put some spread apart legs right there. So this one does look rather insect with little pincher, or actually little, little hands there at the, the front. Maybe something curves upward like that. Just kind of thinking out loud here. And then I'm gonna put some hatching in where I think shadow should exist. So like underneath this, I guess you can call it a canopy. I don't know, it'd be kind of cool. Like that. Um, so I, I did two side views and I did a front view. Let's do something a little different. Let's do a front three quarter view. All right, so this one is gonna be a, just a little tighter all right, but when I do a front three quarter view, I'm gonna keep it on a flat ground as if I'm standing at eye level. Okay, so I'm not gonna to worry too much about using horizon line or a vanishing point and making sure that it's perfectly going off to perspective in the distance. Instead, it's, I'm going to pretend that we are at eye level. So here's a little, here's a little human, okay, just standing there. Be like, hey, there's a little backpack on, little hood. You're like, hey, what's this? What's this giant thing? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so maybe he's like looking at it. Okay, so there's the head tilted. There's the eyes, multiple eyes. All right, so we got like a, a big creature here. Uh, if you can see my cursor moving, I'm very lightly applying different lines throughout the the shape. I don't really know to an extent what I want the anatomy to be on this creature. However, I do know that it is four-legged and it has a rather large neck and head and it's looking directly at that, that human. So I'll put in a mouth. It's kind of like a large salamander mouth. There's the eye that we can see. A little creepy, but that's fine. All right, put in the deltoid muscle. So now this is, this is where it gets kind of fun because this creature's a little bit more fleshed out than the others. So I'm gonna put in a little outline here. I uh, don't wanna to go too human with it, so the, the bicep, tricep, that won't be human-like. Right, there we go, keep it, keep it a quadruped. We'll give it much of a calf. We'll give it some big joints in the back. All right, and then instead of just doing one line for a shadow, I am going to shade in just a little bit, just pay a little bit more attention to the shadow portion. There's the, the knee, there's the leg coming down. Maybe there's two giant toes that, or it's a hoof. And then maybe there's like three in the front here. I'm just gonna darken up where the foot could exist. Okay, and then once I got that, I kind of liked the overall silhouette. Now I'll start to think about body parts and bony landmarks that I do want to show up so that we see the outline of it. Okay, there's gonna be a big hunch back here. Um, you know, now that I look at this, the face looks rather human and I don't want that to happen. So a good way to change that is just to move the eyeballs around so it's not directly on the side of the head. Okay, so we'll keep like a bigger mouth, the nasal cavity, you know, the, the indent that you see on uh, lizards and Creatures with longer faces, you can see an indent where the nasal cavity is and the skull and everything. So I think I'm gonna have that. There we go. All right, so that looks kind of like a bear and I'm pretty picky about the face and what I want to happen. So if I just flatten off the face and maybe put two little eyes in the front, <laughs> that'll be crazy. Bigger jaw and maybe uh, another set of eyes now that I'm, I'm feeling adventurous with the eyeballs. So it's almost like a spider head. And I wanna put more emphasis on the actual head. Okay, 
there we go. All right, so um, now I'm gonna put in some more shading on the back here where the leg is, because not a lot of lights hitting back there. Some bigger hips. There we go. That's how you, that's how you can grow the anatomy on some of these creatures. I'm keeping the lines very light, so you can see my cursor moving. I'm not really pushing hard, but you can see that I'm layering up these different lines so that when it's all said and done, you are actually creating a pretty cool texture just scribbling. You're, you're, not, you're not drawing in scales, hair, skin wrinkles, or whatever. You're just kind of throwing lines together until it starts to fill a space. And that in itself is texture. And this, this whole time, I'm making sure that I'm not overthinking what I'm drawing. Because that happens with everyone, especially when they first start out with drawing. Let's give it a, a fun little tail in the back here. Like this. A little big fat tail. That's kind of cool. It's almost like a, a salamander. Big black eyes like that. Just very, very strange. And you can tell that it's not from Earth. All right. So once we got that, that's a little bit more detailed of a thumbnail and it's front three quarter view. Those are a lot of fun to do. I mean, the more detailed ones. It's because it's it makes your page look better, but also it makes you feel better about your design. But I couldn't get to this one unless I did these three. So you can see that it's a it's a chain reaction. I don't want you to spend too much time worrying about how these pages look. Because remember, your sketchbook is a, a journey, okay? And if you have a personal project that you wanna to do to where you're gonna be developing a character or creature over a certain period of time, you're gonna start off with this mess, okay? And it is a mess. You have, you, can, you need to give yourself permission to get these thumbnails out before you start getting to the good ones. The refinement stages are crucial in concept art. All right, there's a lot of stuff behind closed doors in AAA studios and in film. I should say the art director and the creative director, they don't show you. Okay, there's a lot of ugly stuff, a lot of scribbles, a lot of paint overs and redlining projects and, and all of that. It's a blast, okay? But it's not the presentable portion of concept art. So you can see here, I, I started with a really long one. It's almost like a, it's like an eel. And I'm picky. I, I even like making the ground look good. <laughs> okay, so uh, the other thing is, and this, this goes back to the product design days, side view, when you look at these, side view is really good. It's a good starting point because it allows you to show a little bit of the top, a little bit of the front, a little bit of the belly, some side accent lines and, and cool features, you know, that you normally wouldn't see on just a front view or just a rear view. And it also shows you the silhouette really quickly. Okay, so it looks like this one, huh, the front of it, w without me even trying to do it, kind of looks like a cicada. Maybe I'm influenced because there's a lot of cicadas out right now because you know it's the beginning of September and every, it's still warm out. Um, cicadas is one of my favorite insects. Let's make this one a pure insect. So we did a, a strange rock up here. We did this hulking mass up here. This one is more alien-like. This one is a straight mammal. This one is kind of like a wispy, transparent thing. I don't know. Um, heck, you know what? Since we scribbled in these legs here, ah, this is the fun part of thumbnailing. Why don't we put some fins and make this a swimming creature? Why not? There we go, very wispy, it's almost jellyfish-like. So another really cool thing that you can do for thumbnails if you just wanna make them look pretty, just for aesthetically pleasing people that are looking at your portfolio. Uh, put more detail in on the face and then fade the detail in as, or out as you go throughout the body. So I'm gonna put most of my effort here in the front and I am going into more detail than normal. But you're every now and then you're gonna catch yourself really, 
drawn to a certain thumbnail that you did. And I, I like to tell people that I mentor and I teach, if, if you have a full page of thumbnails and you're having trouble figuring out which one to go with to further develop, take a step back and ask yourself, out of all the designs, which one do you just subconsciously want to keep adding details to? There's always that one drawing on the page, that one that you feel intrigued by that you were happy with from the get-go. And then when you go to another creature and you start drawing it, you keep looking back at that drawing. That's usually a good indicator of the one that you want to go with. And it doesn't matter what you're drawing. You could be drawing weapons, environments, characters, creatures, vehicles. It always happens that way. And if you have multiples, that's a great sign too. That means that your ideas are really flowing and you can have potential two home runs on the same page. All right. Now, when I'm working with clients, I'm working with studios, there's no real set number with how many thumbnails that you want to put on the page unless they give you a specific number. But I will say you have to at least have three. Anything less than three, it's not enough. And we, we like options. When we art direct, we like options. And having at least three gives us the option to say no to two of them, okay? There's a, there's a thing to be said about having choices, all right? Usually three is psychologically pleasing to us. And whenever we look at three, we're like, okay, well, we, we eliminated two of them. We're going to go with that final one. Whereas if it's two, it feels like, well, there, there could be more. Why isn't there like five or six? Personally, for me, I like putting about eight to 10 on a page. Um, now, that's if I'm working for a client with a rather tight deadline. But if I'm just drawing pff, 20, 30, it doesn't matter, especially if you're in this early thumbnail stage, because pretty much at this stage, anything goes. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so there, there's going to be some some tentacles coming out of there. And then uh, I'm just going to cross hatch a little bit, darken up the front. I'm not going to give it any eyes. It's just going to have that, that crazy rounded uh, face. All right, so right now I have two rather detailed ones and three not so detailed ones. But again, I'm going to reiterate, I, I wouldn't have been able to get to this spot, okay, unless I did these three. Now, there's something to be said about starting a creature thumbnail page and being like, well, yeah, I could have easily just started with that. Remember, it's, it's a chain reaction. It's getting your blood flowing. It's getting your brain going. The ideas are coming out and you're stacking different ideas on top of each other. Uh, better known as you know flow state when you get into the flow state of design you feel like you're in the zone okay but you need to get to that spot you, you typically don't just start there all right so down here I, I like the fact that I turned it into more of a marine life and I can keep going on this too I'll just keep drawing and drawing and drawing but I won't because this is a thumbnail page Right, but now we have some ideas on a page here and I want to take a step back and think about them a little bit, come forward. Just remember, if you're doing this just to practice, it doesn't matter what these sketches look like. You can have 50 of them that you think are ugly, but every single one could be a diamond in the rough. Remember that. It's also a good habit to name, or I'm sorry, number them. Okay, especially if you have client work that you need to do. It, it's better to number them because if somebody or a team, or they're going to look at these and there's a dozen or so, it's kind of annoying when, when they have to say, uh, I like the third one down, fifth one over, and that one row, like, nope, I like number 17, or I like number two. It's just, it's self-editing, it's presentation, and it goes a long way. Okay, it makes things easier. All right, so I hope that helped you. This was a lot of fun. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. You should be doing these every day, especially if you want to be a creature designer. Throw these shapes together 
And I would love for, to hear your comments about your own methods of drawing, you know, what, what you feel is hindering you about concept art and about designing creatures, etc. So until next time, thanks again. See ya.